I just want to briefly introduce to you uh, the Society for Psychical Research, uh, the field of parapsychology uh, as it has existed over the last century. Uh, we have a mistaken notion that parapsychology is the province of kooks and, and people who are outside of academic science or, or the academy in general. In fact, uh, parapsychology, uh, for the first 50, 60 years of its existence, is very much a part of, of the institution and was deeply in institutionalized. And in fact, today we see uh, phenomena observed by uh, quantum physics uh, and, and um, astronomy that are difficult to explain and, and place us in the same sort of kooky, spooky space uh, that, that ha has been the regular stomping grounds of the parapsychologist. So the Society for Psychical Research uh, was founded in part by F.W.H. Myers, Frederick Myers. We talked about him uh, a little bit earlier. Um, among uh, Myers' group, it was, a, it was a relatively large group, Eleanor Balfour, who was an educational reformer in England, William Crookes, a scientist who, who uh, also became a committed spiritualist, Alfred Russell Wallace, uh, the co-discoverer of evolution, naturalist, a believer as well. Um, but beyond these, these spiritualist adherents, we also had figures like J.J. Thompson, uh, who was the discoverer of the electron, uh, and Lord Raleigh of the Cavendish Lab, uh, Nobel laureate. Uh, so, uh, some very prominent figures within the SPR's uh, founding group, uh, some uh, with a vested interest in the paranormal, others uh, just with a vested interest in, in discovering uh, some truth, uh, whatever that may mean, uh, proving or disproving the existence of paranormal entities. And, and scientists were not entirely uh, uh, the membership. Uh, Lewis Carroll, famous for writing Alice in Wonderland, and also the poet Alfred Lord Tennyson were among this early group. Uh, so it was a multidisciplinary group, uh, and, and their program of events, what, the, what they sought to achieve, um, focused on a few specific things. Thought transference uh, was an early program of the SPR, uh, the ability of one person to share a thought with another across space or time. Um, mesmerism, um, which we explored a bit. Uh, Reichenbach's phenomenon, which uh, we call auras today. Uh, physical phenomena, uh, the floating tables and things, which were largely defrauded by the society. The SPR did not hold that, that most physical manifestations were at all valid. Um, haunted houses and spontaneous telepathic experiences. Uh, so thought transference dominated most of their program, uh, but they also had committees looking into all of these other areas, uh, mesmerism being uh, one of the more reasonable of the group. Um, and, and physical phenomena being probably the least reasonable and the one that they were most likely to disprove. Uh, and it is important to note that uh, the SPR frequently did uh, disprove uh, a medium, um, and, and they were, were perfectly happy uh, to say when, when they found someone that they found to be fraudulent or, or when they were unable to demonstrate uh, beyond a reasonable doubt uh, that the uh, particular phenomena was in fact taking place uh, in a paranormal way. Uh, they focused on spectacular phenomena and tended to depend on particular gifted individuals. So uh, they may uh, start um, by hearing of a, somebody who, who, who's achieving uh, incredible or, or paranormal results in seances, and, and then they would bring this person into their own space where they could control the circumstances and, and perform controlled experiments with that person, and, and they spend a lot of time with uh, different mediums that way. Uh, some of the main mediums they worked with were Pearl Coran, uh, who, who practiced automatic writing under the direction of a spirit she called Patience Worth. She would write novels and poems and give uh, quick-fire epigrams and aphorisms. Um, uh, theoretically under the influence of this spirit. She knew, uh, had facts about other time periods and, and other languages and cultures that, that uh, the medium herself uh, didn't seem to have received by natural means. Um, and Eusebia Palladino, uh, who was a, a fairly prominent medium who alternated between uh, pr producing extraordinary feats that the society couldn't explain uh, and outright uh, faking it, um, and, and they caught her in, in a, a series of frauds. But uh, to their credit, they, all that, while they caught her in, fraud, in, in attempting to fake phenomena, they didn't utterly dismiss her as a, as a medium as a result of this. Uh, because there were some things she could do that uh, they couldn't explain under circumstances that they deemed adequately scientifically controlled. 
the later uh, SPR parapsychologists um, fell under uh, the purview of a man by the name of J.B. Rhine. Uh, so J.B. Rhine uh, sort of brought the, the program of parapsychological research to the United States. Uh, and he founded a laboratory at Duke University. Again, very much established uh, academic setting to be conducting parapsychological research. It hasn't always been the province of, of outliers or, or, or kooks. He earned a PhD and was first appointed as a botanist uh, and went to Harvard to study psychology and philosophy and then moved to Duke to head the psychology department. He established the paradigmatic uh, ESP tests, the tests that we tend to identify with ESP today, uh, were the series of cards with symbols on them, um, using either the down-through method where the subject named all 25 shuffled cards uh, without anyone knowing the order of the card, uh, and then they would see how many hits and how many misses in those 25 or uh, what was called the basic technique, where the top card of the deck was removed but not inspected by anyone, uh, and then and then the, the the subject had to guess what what the the card actually had on it. Uh, the later instances of of SPR research, uh, Ryan's research in particular, was interested in discovering the degree to which psychic ability was present in all people. Uh, so whereas the early SPR was interested in, in just a few very uh, specially gifted people, Ryan believed that uh, all people had a psychic ability that it just hadn't been tested or explored in any way. Uh, so he didn't seek out uh, specially gifted people, but rather uh, invited large groups of, of students, for example, to come in and, and test with him. Um, uh, and Gertrude Schmiedler also did uh, some very uh, fascinating experience, uh, experiments in, in the American parapsychological research. Uh, she had her, her PhD in psychology from Harvard, and uh, her famous study was separating the sheep from the goats. What Schmiedler discovered was that believers in ESP tended to score above chance um, on a test of, of ESP ability, whereas disbelievers tended to score below chance. Uh, so, so let's say we were flipping a coin. Um, what Schmiedler discovered was that uh, if we were flipping a coin, uh, the chance that you would get uh, the flip of the coin, the, the heads or tails correct, or, or that you would be able to manipulate the flip of the coin so that heads or tails showed, was 50-50. That, that's the mean chance that, that there is no paranormal influence on this coin whatsoever. However, if you believed that it was possible for you to manipulate the movement of the coin with your mind, then you would score above a 50% chance that the coin would show what you willed it to show. Fascinatingly, if you didn't believe that it was possible, if you actively disbelieved in the paranormal and in, in telekinesis and, and in ESP, you would have a lower than 50% chance of scoring a, a correct guess on the coin. So you shouldn't have had a, a lower chance. You should have disbelieving uh, if there was no such thing as psychic or ESP phenomenon, you should have had a 50% chance period, whether you believed or not. But what Schmiedler showed was that belief actually impacted the results of what actually occurred in the physical world in the experiment, a fascinating result.